What's going on everybody? Triple Crown 24 back today on a Monday. Time for a new card show recap and then showing off some mail as well as a contest response. So this one will be a very lengthy video for me. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the card show recap. I went to a show just to buy. I did sell a couple of cards to some dealers who I was going to meet up with there. Uh, but I just wanted to get some inventory and I got quite a few dollar box cards. So I'm going to show those off while I do my uh, contest response and I did pick up two larger items one of them is for the Cabrera PC one of them is for inventory purposes also met up with JY sports card guy there so he might have a recap of the show on his channel as well we kind of hung out for a bit checked out some of the deals and this was the Cabrera card that I bought for myself it's numbered 69 from 2005 ultimate collection so Nice to add a new Cabrera to the PC. Third uh, autograph card I have from this particular product. The other two I have are from different autograph subsets, so kind of have the uh, complete trio there. These were also Cabreras that I got at the show, and that's because they were in my dollar box haul. I got a ton of these uh, Diamond Kings frames that you'll see here in a little while, but these two were in there. I had the red frame version of this card, but I did not have this plum frame or the blue frame. So those are two new ones to add in. And then on top of that, I got this. And I'm going to try to position it here where you can see it a little bit better. Shout out to a league of their own. I think she will appreciate this. But this is the Year of the Tiger, and I apologize for the glare on it. So this is a vinyl record. Um, it has the voice of Ernie Harwell, who is a legendary Tigers broadcaster for many years so it's a vinyl album and what's really cool about this one kind of just to spoil it there a bit is on the back it is signed three times twice by Denny McLean and once by Willie Horton so there's Horton's signature there there's McLean's the dealer who had this acquired these at a show um, in Michigan one of them that I don't normally set up at uh, so I and I've seen those guys' autographs many times to know that they are authentic. So no COA with it. And I thought it was ironic that I got a clean autograph while he was right there across the room. Um, I did get to meet McLean, and he was a really nice guy. So that was really cool. But you can see there the complete stats on the back uh, with all the inscriptions. Just a fantastic piece. So this one is technically inventory. I'm going to bring it with me, but it's more so going to be a piece that I kind of have at like Detroit area shows uh, just for the sake of um, having it as a conversation piece. I like to usually have items on the table or in the showcase that catch people's attention. So maybe they'll stick around and stop by and pick up something else maybe. So this is just a, a one of a kind type of piece given the inscriptions on the back. Um, these records themselves, they're about $20, but to get assigned one by two vital members of the 68 team, I just thought that was way too cool to pass up. So if, uh, if that doesn't move here soon, I have no problem with that at all. So, And then a couple of little mail day purchases before I show you my inventory that I got for dollar boxes, kind of mixing it all up here. I got this postseason 2011 relic manufactured number 25. I got this for like 550 shipped at auction. So my, one of my strategies with picking up cards for the super collection is to just go for the best deal, just because there are so many different cards to pick up. Unless circumstances apply where I need, I want to go after a certain card. Um, but in this case, this one right here, I thought that fit the billing for a good deal, number 25. So that was a, a no-brainer decision to go after that one. And then continuing my run on 2020 tops, made a trade on blowout for this gold Cabrera. Someone busted open a case and uh, messaged me and asked if they'd asked them if they'd like to make a trade, and we worked it out. So that was awesome to add the gold into the rainbow. Then a separate uh, deal that I made on Twitter with the assist to those back pages. He pointed these out and uh, helped me complete the deal. But I got the Walgreens yellow to add to the rainbow and the gold numbered to 50 of the 85 retro design. So these are 
really nice additions. I have one more card coming for this rainbow later in the week that I am very excited about, so stay tuned for that. Some of you probably already know what that is because I've texted a lot of people about it because I was really excited. Um, so I have quite a bit of dollar box stuff. I have basically, give you an idea here, this giant box full of stuff that was just given to me there at the show. Uh, so I have all that, and then I have a ton of 2020 tops that I bought a lot off of the Tigers Collectors Group on Facebook. So I'm going to go through the 2020 top slot that I bought to kick things off. Here it is all here. And then I got a couple more stacks aside. And I'm just going to kind of thumb through these to kind of show you what I got. I think for both lots combined, it was right around $100 to $110, and it's, I got to say, close to... 800 so cards so that's and the cards in here too are, are pretty nice in my opinion some of them I, I can definitely move for more than a dollar on ebay so uh after you see this today or probably while you see this i will be listing away adding these to the store but if there is anything you see at any point in time while i'm thumbing through this that maybe you need for a set or your it's your player or it's your team just go ahead and shoot me an email and we can try to work something out perhaps off of ebay or if you want to just go through my store that is fine as well. So let me make sure I've got a good angle here to show these off. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll just see a lot of inserts. Uh, there'll probably be quite a few duplicates and I'll probably have to switch them out at some point, but figured I'd kind of show you guys what I what I try to pick up for dollar box inventory um, and at the, at the price point that I do. So while I show these off, there is a contest going on right now uh, that MP Fox put out, and I wanted to participate in it last year, but for some reason I didn't get my video out in time. Uh, but they do a predictions contest over on their channel for MLB, and it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you guys are watching, I would like to not be entered in to actually win. I just want to do it for fun and kind of talk about baseball and show off some cards. So uh, I could be ineligible for whatever prize you you may come up with here for the winner um then that'd, that'd be great just because i want to see someone else win but just want to show my support for a great channel so definitely go check out mp fox so they have 20 questions for me to answer well not just for me but for everybody out there um they want to know the division winners so that's one through six we'll start with the al east i'm going to take the yankees to win it i know not really going out on a limb the only other team I could see in the East making a run at it this year would be the Rays, and I'm, I wasn't a huge fan of their offseason. There was a couple of moves that I kind of scratched my head on, some of the players that they they brought in, but I think the Rays will be really good. I I see them being one of the two wild card teams. He's uh, seen a black there, so I'm going with the Yankees to win the division. And then in the AL Central, this is the one that I have the most interest in. I am not taking my favorite team, but instead I'm going to go with maybe a sleeper pick, and I'm going to take the White Sox. I like what they did in the offseason, and I usually try to stay away from the teams that quote-unquote won the offseason, um, so the ones who made the splashiest and, and most amount of moves. And Chicago is very active, but overall I think a lot of what's going to happen is just improvement from their own players. So... Uh, G. Lito, I can see being a Cy Young contender this season. I think Eloy Jimenez is has got an All Star season ahead of him. You get the arrival of Luis Robert, the development of Juan Moncada even more, and then they they added some solid veteran pieces around those guys. Uh, Dallas Keuchel, uh, he has Money Grandal. So all of those guys, I would say, are going to contribute to making the White Sox uh, division champs. So I'm, I'm taking them as my sleeper pick. In the AL West, I'm going with the Athletics, so shout out to all of the A's fans out there. The Astros are a really good team still, uh, despite what has gone down this offseason. I don't necessarily think that them winning the World Series was all attributed to uh, the shenanigans or even their postseason success in the past few years, but I think that the pressure and, and the fallout from the scandal that is consume them is going to be enough to kind of push them out of the playoff hunt. Uh, so I'm going with the A's as kind of the next man up to take their spot atop the division. So Athletics win the AL West. 
The NL East, uh, probably the hardest division to predict in my opinion. I'm actually taking the Phillies. So shout out to Wesker Griff, Mike O, Ray from Philly, all the Philly fans out there. I like Girardi as a manager there a lot. I think that's a really good fit. And there was a lot of expectations for the Phillies last season after signing Harper. I think with some of that pressure off now, they're really being overlooked. Um, and I, I just think they have a solid team. So I, I'm going to take the Phillies to make the jump uh, and, and capture that division title come the end of the season. So the NL Central, uh, this one this one is extremely tough as well. And my pick might be a little surprising, but I'm going to go with the Cubs to win the NL Central. Uh, the reason for that. I don't know. I just I think with a new manager in there, I'm, I don't know how much I like the Ross pick uh, right now as their manager, but I think uh, there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot of good players on that team who maybe have underperformed. So I, I wanted to go with the Reds, but again, I just I don't really feel comfortable taking teams that quote-unquote won the off season. So going with the Cubs. And then who wins the NL West? The Dodgers. I think that's a slam dunk. I just they've got Mookie Betts now. I, I don't know who is gonna who's gonna stop them at this point in time. Um, but I, I think that if they won the World Series in 2020. I would not mind seeing that. So that's the division winners. Uh, moving into some of the different questions now. Who has more wins between the two Chicago teams? I'm gonna go with the White Sox. So I picked both teams to win their respective divisions, but I think that it's going to be really close. I just think the White Sox playing in the division that has an Indians team that's not quite as good, and then you have the two cellar dwellers, my beloved Tigers and the Royals. I think that's going to be an easier division to win in. Uh, and even the American League, I think it's easier to rack up some wins against some of the not-so-good American League teams where the National League has a lot more depth. There's a lot more uh, second-tier teams where it's all or nothing pretty much in the American League. So I'm going with the White Sox. How many home runs will Aaron Judge hit? I'll say 44. I think he'll be healthy. I think he'll have a solid season. I think the Yankees are going to be good. That's uh, pretty much all there is to that. What will Bryce Harper's batting average be? I think a little bit better than normal. I'll go with 275. I don't expect him to do what he did in 2015, but I think the Phillies lineup is pretty solid overall. They'll have more protection in that lineup this year and uh, maybe have a little bit better average. So, will the Marlins win 80 games? No, I really don't see the Marlins. I don't know if they will... Uh, Eclipse 70 wins. Um, that, that would surprise me. So I do not think that they will win 80 games this year. Uh, let's see. Who will lead the National League in home runs? And I probably have a, a pick that nobody else is going to go with here. Um, but it's just kind of one of those that's uh, why not go for it? Because I don't think anyone else will. I'm going to take Mike Moustakis of the Reds. That lineup is pretty darn good, and I thought the Reds lineup was, was solid last season before they added Castellanos, and you have Aquino now as a, as a bench player, which is kind of strange, but you have Moustakis in there now, who's always been a really good power hitter, but now he's going to a very hitter-friendly park, and uh, left-handed hitters have typically had a lot of success in Cincinnati. They'll be a good team. I, I think they'll be a wild-card team, if I had to guess. Um but I'm going to go with uh, him to be the NL home run leader. Who will be the all-star game MVP? Well, they, they got kind of cute with it last year. They chose Shane Bieber, who was the hometown guy in, in Cleveland. So I think they will do another one where the, the, home, the hosting team will have a all-star MVP. So I'm going to say what better way to, to get back at the – the league that traded him away than the win All-Star Game MVP. Go with Mookie Betts to win All-Star Game MVP. I think he will have a great season out in Los Angeles. The Angels had 72 wins last year. Will they have more or less, and how many more or less? I'm going to say they are a 500 team this year, so they will go 81-81. and 81. They win nine more games. 
Pitching situation is a little bit better, but not enough where I would say they're a postseason contender. I think the Astros' struggles are going to help them a little bit. I don't think the Rangers are going to be as good as last year. I think the Mariners are really not that good, um, so they can capitalize on that. So nine more wins for the Angels. How many more or less games will the Pirates uh, win this year? And uh, Bob Lewis, you might want to cover your ears for this one if you are watching, sir. I am going to go with minus 15 wins. I believe they had, I think it was 69 wins last year. I see the Pirates will go 54 and 108. I just really, I don't know if I could name five Pirates players right now. That roster seems like it, it's kind of thin. Um, and they play in a very tough division as well. Yeah, all four teams besides the Pirates in that division have a chance to win it. So it, I really don't think uh, that's going to bode too well for them. So I'll take minus 15 on the Pirates. Who will have more hit by pitches, Anthony Rizzo or Shinsu Chu? I'll say Rizzo. I, I just know that sometimes those NL Central rivalries can get a little heated. So that might lead to some more people getting plunked um so yeah anthony rizzo who will have more wins charlie morton or justin verlander i'm gonna go with verlander i think that morton is gonna be on a the better team this year i, I think the rays will beat out the astros for a wild card spot uh, but in general, I would say that the Rays, I, I feel like they use their bullpen a lot. And I'm, I'm no Rays expert, but I think that's going to kind of mess with Morton's ability to be in line for certain wins. Uh, so I'm going to go with Verlander since he's a, you know, he's a pretty steady ace of the rotation. And uh, I think he's usually good for at least 15 wins a year now since he came over to Houston. So why not go with, uh, with JV? Will Blake Snell win more than 15 games? No. Uh, again, kind of the same thing I talked about with Morton. I just don't. Uh, I, I don't trust Ray's pitchers in terms of wins. I expect them to like do well, but they always seem to have good pitching. But I don't know how far I can trust them. Who will be the first manager to be fired? I'm going to go with Terry Francona of the Indians. I think that the Indians are going to have a really they're going to struggle in the first half. Uh, they've kind of been plagued by injury already. They've, they've lost Corey Kluber. There's rumors of Lindor being on the move. That's going to persist, I think, throughout the season. So uh, I, I really think the Indians are, are going to struggle. They'll fall behind the White Sox and the Twins fairly quickly. And that's going to spell the end of the line for Tito. So, uh Francona is the first one. And then my World Series pick, who, who will be there, and I'll show off just one last stack here. I didn't get to all the cards, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I am going to go with the Dodgers to win the National League and the Yankees to win the American League, which is probably one of the most safe, boring predictions I could possibly make. Uh, but I'm usually not very good at making these kind of predictions for baseball, so kind of just <laughs> rolling with it here. Uh, but with the Dodgers, after they got bets and Price, uh, Price is still a, a solid pitcher. I know that he was kind of just a throw-in to the bets deal, but David Price is a former Cy Young winner, and uh, he's played pretty well up until last season. So I really think that uh, the Dodgers – it's everyone against them right now to to win the National League. And then over on the American League side, I think anything short of a World Series is a is a bust for the Yankees. With the Astros kind of uh, in a little bit of turmoil right now, I think this is going to be their best shot to win it because I think Houston was their biggest competition. But And, of course, the Red Sox as well, but they've lost bets. So the two biggest challenges to the Yankees are, are out of the way now, kind of, um, in my opinion. So... I'll take them to uh, face the Dodgers in the World Series. So that'll do it for me. I went for almost 20 minutes there. So, uh, yeah, lengthy video. But appreciate you checking out today's video. I'll be sure to see you next time. Have a good one.